it's Yvette and I am back with week two of the Fort Worth Fabric Studios A Day in May Mystery Quilt. Um, and I know that due to me being gone all last weekend, there are a whole bunch of you guys who are like way, way ahead of me. So um, you may have already seen these completed, but I am still on week two. I'm just starting that. So, um, and they do make note to us that it's going to require precise cutting and sewing for this week. Um, makes me a little nervous because y'all know how I am. So I'm just going to scant quarter inch everything. In fact, I think whenever um, I spoke with Ju uh, Jody, she said that we should also we could like just essentially do an eighth of an inch. So I'm essentially going to do that because I <laughs> I'm so bad about my um, about my seams anyway. And you know how anal I am with everything. So I am going to probably just do that. Um, so it starts off quite similar to, um, in fact, exactly similar to the beginning of week one. And we're going to take these L block, L squares and Q squares, and we're going to put them together just as we did um, to make these little guys, um, which we made for week one. Okay. Um, so we are going to take our letters off, L and Q, and what we will be doing is we're going to take those and we're going to put them right sides together, okay, and then we have the um, little measuring from OmniGrid um, where we'll put it down from corner to corner and then we'll draw a line on either side and we'll do that um, both ways, corner to corner, on all of those. And we will then um, sew on the lines that we drew. And then we're going to cut right down the middle this way, right down the middle this way, straight up the middle here, and then straight over the middle there. So let me go ahead and um, mark these seams. I'm going to mark on the wrong side of the lighter fabric just so that it's easier to see my marks. And I do use the friction pen. You use whatever marking device you prefer. Um, Cause as long as it works for you, it really doesn't matter um, what you use. Anything will be just fine. Anything that's not permanent, obviously. And I am obviously way too anal about this stuff, but y'all know how I am already. In fact, I think that this pen is like about to be like done. That's why I'm doing that. Shoo -choo -choo -choo. You see me like doing this big mark because my pen is running out of ink, but that's okay. I like to use it until there's like no ink left at all. Like I'm going back and forth a hundred times and I can't get ink out because these pens aren't cheap, you know? Okay, do that side. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this way. I try so hard to get it right in the middle. Because, Lord forbid, I should like get it a little crooked. Of course, I'm worried about those seams now. <laughs> but I'm just going to do it an eighth of an inch and that'll solve that problem. You know what I'm saying? If I do it an eighth of an inch, there's no way I could go wrong. That's what I keep telling myself. Can't go wrong, girl. <laughs> Guys should tell me what y'all have been working on. I mean, other than this. Because I know I've influenced the entire world to make these mystery quilts. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but these are fun. I love, um, I love seeing what you guys are doing. Although I have to admit that while I was in Florida, even though, yes, I was at a super awesome conference and I had a great time and everything else and it was really wonderful, I was still quite jellyfish of some of you who got really far along. Because I wasn't able to sew last weekend, but that's okay. I'm going to catch up. And this is going to be the last one. You know, I, I know exactly where I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to flip it this way, though. I am not 
throwing my back in your face again. And just hit it right on that line, and I know I'm in the right spot. Oops, that needs to go. Do 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 do. Tonight is kind of special. <laughs> is that the commercial from whenever I was a kid that was Reuniti, Reuniti on Ice? I don't remember. Anyway, <laughs> could possibly be aging myself here. Now, all I do is I just put, and again, guys, this is just an Yvette thing. If you want to just go over there and wing the whole thing, you just go ahead, honey bun. You don't have to do every single thing I do. When you're watching me sew, this is just, this is really how I sew. <laughs> so this is basically just watch. And if it looks like it's, you know, something cool to you, go ahead and give it a go. If it's not, because whatever it is you do already works for you like gangbusters, dude, don't change that. It's already working for you. But I will go ahead and throw out tips of just stuff I do. So you can just label this as what the anal quilters do. <laughs> the ones who are afraid to like get their line like sort of crooked or whatever. I don't know. I just, listen, it makes me feel good to draw the lines. It does. You don't have to draw the lines if you don't want to. You are your own person, honey bun. Okay, so I have got my um, squares all marked up and they're ready for me to sew. So uh, once again, I'm going to sew a line on every line that I've drawn here. And then I'm going to cut straight up this corner, straight up that corner, right across there and straight up that way. So we'll have um, eight, one, eight little blocks from each one of these and which is obviously be a total of 16. Woo, I can do math. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to come back as soon as I get this all sewed up for you. Okay, so I'm back and I'm going to, um, I'm going to, well, I've said this like 12 times. You guys already know what I'm going to do. All right, I'll say it again though. I'm going to cut um, diagonally this way, diagonally this way, and then across this way and up this way. And I pulled out my um, rotating mat just so that we can um, try to give it a go that way, make it a little bit easier. Um, so here we go. I'm basically just going to um, go a quarter inch from the line that I sewed. All right. <laughs> I moved it anyway, so you know I don't know what it's. I don't know if this is really going to help me. <laughs> the ruler can, or the rotating mat can only help you so much if you're not going to um, keep the darn thing from moving. Okay. And this one I could probably just do from here. And this one, um, wasn't it that it was like three inches? What was that other, what was that other ruler I used? Was it this one? It might have been this one. Because then I put it right, yeah, that was the one. This is my uh, three and a half inch wide ruler. And if I put it like on the edge there, it goes right up the middle. And that's like so serendipitous. I was like, I can't believe that happened. Um, so let me try to turn the mat. And of course it moved a little bit, but that's okay. I can, I can put it back and it'll be fine. I can see where it goes. Boo, boo, be doo, boo. All right. Go there, and it's right up the middle. Alrighty. That's the first one, and there's my eight blocks. And here's the second one. I have to make a video of the kids for y'all. I'm going to try to do that so that maybe with everyone, even if they don't come over to sew with me, um... I can just go and video them doing something else and y'all can oops I'm gonna like roll over my blocks there and then the, you can still see them because sometimes they just don't come over and sew with me or do anything with me or they'll stay on the floor while I'm opening the box you just never know what they're gonna do little kooky cats little babies my babies 
and there we go. I do love having this um, rotating mat. They're not cheap, I do know that, um, but I do think it's worth it. There's, you know, certain things that you'll want to buy, you know, that kind of make you go, eh, I don't know, you know, is it really going to be worth it? I, I mean, just for me, I'm only speaking on my behalf, I think it's worth it, but, you know. Um, okay, so now I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and press these, and um, I think she has us pressing toward the darker color, just like the last time. Yep, okay, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and press those over and then I'll come back and we'll go on to the next step. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I have uh, pressed all these little squares and now I'm going to have to trim them down to um, two and one eighth inch squares. So I'm going to use the block lock ruler and as um, I remember, I'm supposed to take the fabric that had the seam going toward it um, on the top and then the other piece on the bottom and then where the block lock logo is um, will be to the bottom right so it'd be bottom block okay um, you put that up top and then you push it until you hit the um, the seam and then I'm going to just slide it down until I am going to be trimming something, but right here um, is the, oops, I'm at the wrong place. Right here is the two and one eighth inch, and then the two and one eighth inch. So it's gonna be way up to there. So I've got plenty that I'm gonna be uh, cutting off. Since I have this, I'm just sort of turn it a little bit. So it'll be easier to cut. Cut that one. And I'm just going to keep turning it. See, I should have done this one, done this the last time. And then cut. Okay, and then I am going to, um, if I just take this, and remember if I just put my finger on both uh, ends of the, um, where this um, line is, I'm trying to think of what it is, the shaded line, the frosted line on either side of the frosted line and I'm going to turn toward the fabric that has the seam allowance. Um, so I'm just going to, well that's, oh there it is, okay. I was like that's not working. Um, okay, so I'm, then I'm going to slide it back down again and it's it's sliding itself right along the seam and now I'm going to stop it right where that two and one eighth is. Move it just a hair up. There we go. She says, make sure it's exact. So I'm doing the best I can to make it exact. I'm gonna turn it, hold it, and cut. And then do the other side. Okay. So now I have one done and I am going to finish up the other 15 and I think I'm probably going to stop for the night. It is, I don't know, it's after 7.30 and I have to go make dinner. So um, I will see you guys tomorrow with the next step. Hey guys, it's Yvette. I'm back um, and I am finished with these little squares that I had um, pressed open. And now we're on to step number two, which has us taking a K square and a W square, and we're going to put them right sides together. So let me just take these off now. And I think there are four. Okay, so I'll have those four, and then we're putting them right sides together. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line from corner to corner. So not both corners, just one. Okay, so I am going to 
take. I always figure lose where my little rulers are. Is that one long enough? Nope. Where's that big one? You oh, here it is. Okay, I'll just take the big one. So I'm going to put the ruler right on those corners. As long as it takes a second to get it right where you want it. And then I'm going to take my friction pan. You can take whatever it is that you like. And I'm going to draw a line on either side. And I do have the rotating option, so let's do that. Am I still holding it? No, of course not. Why would I still be holding it? Okay, right there. And then I'm going to draw the line on the other side. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that on the other three of these. I'm going to um, take this over to the sewing machine. And I'm going to sew my line, or two lines, um, one on each area where I have drawn the line. And then I'll come back and I'm going to um, use my rotary cutter to cut straight down the middle. So I'll be right back after I've finished sewing those lines. Okay, I'm just back real quick to show um, that I have stitched on these lines. And the next step is just to uh, cut a line straight down the middle or to cut them uh, in half straight down the middle. And so I will take a ruler. This one's closest. It's overkill, but we'll, we'll use this one. And I'm going to put my quarter inch line on one of the uh, lines that I have sewed down. And I'll take my rotary cutter right down the middle, and then I'll have two from each square. <laughs> That's Jelly Bean. I don't know if you can hear him. He can't make up his mind to come over here and be in the video for a minute. I'll try to remember to make you guys another video so that you can see him. Okay. So now that I have all of these half square triangles, I am going to um, go over and we're going to press them toward the green side. So I will get these pressed um, and then we need to trim them down. So I will be right back with that step. Okay, so I have done the pressing and I'm going to set these aside and I'm going to do one at a time, of course. <laughs> um, okay, so we need to trim these down to three and three quarter squares. Um, and then after we're done with that, we will have eight three and three quarter inch squares uh, like this. Uh, so once again, we're going to take the piece that has the fabric pressed toward it. I'm going to put it to the top right. And I'm going to put the, um, the other fabric bottom left. Um, okay. And then the block lock uh, logo will go on the bottom. So bottom block, bottom block. That's how I do it. Um, okay, so this line here, if you feel on the back, um, there is a lip on it. And that's why we like to press to one side whenever we're going to use the block lock because this line will catch itself right on the seam. And then we're going to pull this down, right? And we want to make sure that we have at least three and three quarters inch plus more fabric to the right and plus more fabric to the bottom because we're going to have to flip it around um, to cut off the edges there. We need to have um, more than enough fabric to be able to do that. Okay, so once I have that there, I'm going to turn this so that I can easily trim. And I know before I was doing it without using this turntable and um, 
I know that makes everyone nervous and I don't blame you. So I've pulled this out um, so that I can do it properly. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do is we want to turn the block um, and really I'm not going to have to do it because I have my rotating. So I'm just going to um, push that down against the seam again and now I am actually going to put the three and three quarter inch line right here and this three and three quarter inch line right here on the green and they made sure to let us know that it's got to be exact and it's almost impossible to get it exact but I've got it pretty close there I'll just turn this so I can make that cut and then I'll turn again and make the last cut okay and that's how the block will look so I'm gonna finish the other seven blocks and I'll be right back with step three okay so um, I have finished trimming these all down to three and three quarter inch squares and the next step which is step three has us stitching uh, the small half square triangle blocks together in sets of two uh, and then what they want us to do is four sets are going to have the green pieces to the top left and the other four sets will have the green pieces to the top right that way they're both they're each pointing in a different direction um, so I have already uh, drawn my quarter inch line uh, on all of the squares and I'm ready to stitch them together so I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and do that and then I'm going to come back and we are going to be on step four so I'll be right back okay so I have uh, stitched these together and there's no indication on the paperwork how we're supposed to press them so what I'm going to do is press them open that's because I'm looking at how we're going to be sewing them on to the next pieces and I would prefer to have as flat of seams as possible so that's what I'm going to do um, and as soon as I get those pressed I will be right back okay so I've come back after uh, pressing these smaller pieces open and I did restarch them as um, was suggested and I've also marked the back of these with a, they said to do a um, scant quarter inch. And when I spoke with Jody on the phone, she said that she would actually err towards an eighth inch. So that's what I did. I just marked an eighth inch thinking, you know, I already have enough trouble with my piecing. So I will go at an eighth inch and, you know, do a little bit of praying. Uh, <laughs> so the next thing that we're going to do, and I've laid them all out, is we're going to sew uh, these trying, well, I guess that's a rectangle. We're going to sew these rectangles to the squares in this layout, right? And it is um, specifically shown on the sheet, so it's going to be just like this, and I've already marked all my seams. So I'm going to take these over to the machine, I'm going to sew everything, and then I'll come right back and we'll get on to step five. Okay, so I have finished um, stitching these with the eighth inch seam, and now I'm going to um, go over and I'm going to press them. I'm going to press them open, um, just because we are going to be adding another piece, and um, I would like to keep it as, like, not bulky. I wanted to keep it as flat as possible, so um, it's a very small seam. <laughs> So we'll see how it goes, but I'm going to try to press it open and I'll be right back for uh, part number five. Okay, so I'm back and I have uh, sewed all of the rectangles to the squares and now we are going to add um, to either side, depending on um, which type of um, piece it is, we are going to add the T rectangles. Um, to the other side and I have already marked my quarter inch seam on all of them and uh, I'm ready to head over to the sewing machine so what I'll do is I'll do that part and then I'll come back because we are going to put together our lily block so I'll be right back 
Okay guys, so I'm back. I've got all my blocks and I'm ready to put together my lily blocks. So I will scooch everything over to a spot so I can take one of each. Okay, the first thing I'm going to take is one of these guys, which is our flower portion. And I wanna put it right up here. And then I'm gonna take um, one of these. I'm trying to figure out which way. Okay, so, nope. I'm gonna put this gonna go like that. And it's gonna go like this. Okay, so then I'm gonna take one of these going to put it up here and then I can take one of my stems and put it here and then I'm going to take the other guy <laughs> that's what I call them my other guy and I'm going to put it there and that's going to make my lily block I don't know like to me it looks like a tulip I don't know why <laughs> I can say that. I'm not even sure it really looks like a tulip, but for some reason in my head I say tulip. But these are lily blocks. So I'm going to make four of these and then I'll just come back and show them to you and we'll be done with week two finally. Um, I know I do everything so much slowly than everybody else. I apologize for that. But um, I will get that done and show you the finished four lily blocks. And then um, tomorrow I'll start on week three. Woohoo! I finished week two. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> so here is where we are after or at the end of week two. Um, which means I am almost caught up with you guys. I am hopefully going to get week three done tomorrow and uh, post it up tomorrow night and then I'll be right on track with you guys to start week four on Monday. Um, yeah, so yay, I'm there. <laughs> and um, just in case, just if you wanna like just see what one looks like just because um, they're all kind of together right there. But there we go, that's the one, um, square by itself so you can see and we have four of those all together um, let's see maybe I can even lift this up a little bit yeah so there you go um, that's where we are and I will see you guys tomorrow bye